Welcome back to TTC. We're continuing our series testing products on Amazon with very specific performance claims that are also often very bogus, as it turns out. Including, of course, flashlights, but horns, headlight bulbs, and even lasers and tasers you guys have requested we look at. Appreciate that last one, thanks. But today we're diving into something potentially even more lethal for you, carabiners sold on Amazon. Which I hope doesn't hurt me as much as the tasers, but these are advertised with high strength ratings that if they don't hit their mark, you might just come down with the bad case of the gravities real quick. Like why is this guy hooked up like that? Is this guy going to die? We're gonna find out. We're talking from 12, often 24, up to 30 kilonewtons written on these things. That's 6,744 pounds from a lightweight aluminum grocery bag holder looking thing. That's the weight of a run-of-the-mill Ford F-350 Super Duty. I'm far from an expert, but it seems hard to believe and enough so that many of you requested it and we built a crude carabiner death machine to blow apart steel, aluminum, forged aluminum, 7075 stainless steel carabiners at up to 10,000 frames per second using our latest high-speed camera setup. Oh yeah, and measure them too because, you know, we're here for that science, of course. Up first, in order of strength claims and price, we have the Openg Sky, a two-piece set for seven bucks or 350 a piece and advertises the lowest on the day, 3.8 kilonewtons. Now, full disclosure, I'm no climbing expert, but being unqualified makes me fully qualified to browse Amazon and buy whatever carabiners look like they might do the trick and add them to the cart like many shoppers might be doing. As usual, this is naturally going to mix some no-name and well-known brands together, and we're curious what that does to the advertised specs on these products. The magnet sticking to this one was a surprise to me, usually carabiners are aluminum. This comes along with the mixed bag of Amazon brands sort of experience, of course, but hey, steel, not known for being that weak. So this is our masterpiece of a totally not thrown together at all sketchy design. You got a hollow body hydraulic ram, some overbuilt hardware for the task, and a pressure gauge. We're going to use a hydraulic pump to edge this up until, well, it pops. And at this end of the kilonewton scale, yeah, not very dramatic. Just a pop and no high speed footage here. But that peaked at 717 psi, which means nothing to us either yet, don't worry, but by using the hydraulics calculator and plugging in our bore surface area that comes out to 8.84 kilonewtons. Nice. And for us laymen, that's around 2,000 pounds for something claiming it can hold 855 pounds force max static load along the length, 233% over advertised. Still shouldn't climb with it though, depending on your weight, a factor 1.5 out of 2 fall could break this. I won't explain fall factors mainly because I don't understand most of it, but two is most often the max fall factor and usually you want some safety factor over that as well. But this still gets a pass from us, unlike most of the models on this list. It's not advertising, hiking, climbing, bouldering, just wanted to test something someone might have laying around. Okay, and going up three times in rated strength, but still around the same price per piece because you need to buy four of them at a time, we have the Unijoy, rated for 12 kilonewtons. These feel very lightweight because we're finally in aluminum now. While the last steel one was 60 grams, this one is only 22 grams. For reference, a pair of these Ray-Bans is 36 grams, so we're talking pretty light. Its gate also feels more secure. Did this slap test with each model and only this first Openg Sky model here sounded a bit sus to us. 12 kilonewtons though, that's 2,700 plus pounds. Let's see if it can do it. Fourteen hundred and seventy-five PSI, that's 18.17 kilonewtons. Very nice, it's crazy just how much aluminum ones stretch before they fail. 151%, like a 1.51 safety factor overrated. That's incredibly good. We're talking a $3.25 carabiner here. Not how I expected things to go on this side of the chart. Okay, and up next we have the last 12 kilonewton carabiner from Amazon. It's the Outmate. It's a lot like the last one, one of these smaller than average looking aluminum carabiners with what would be an annoyingly small gate. But you can carry a whole lot of them at just 20 grams a pop and $3.50 a piece. Let's take a look, this time in high speed, which we need a lot of light for, so that'll explain the spotlight you're going to be seeing.
Yep, we're still dealing with the smaller 12 kilonewton guys, not very dramatic yet, but let's see it through the eyes of a $10,000 high-speed camera. Here it is at 5,500 frames per second. Okay, I lied, this is actually super cool. Man, anything looks cool in mega high-speed. 16.3 kilonewtons, 136%, not bad. We're also listing weight per kilonewton measured and cost per kilonewton measured. We're both here, lower is best. Okay, next is a bit of a wild card. It's a 304 stainless carabiner that had no strength rating at all, but its title said heavy duty in words like hammock, lifting, hiking, outdoors, and rope sports. Really dancing around the issue here, and I've personally been dumb enough to assume stainless meant a stronger carabiner when testing stuff with a low tester before, so I'm curious. 124 grams, so you wouldn't want to be carrying around a pack of these. Let's see. What? I didn't even press it yet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Dude. Somebody is Don't dead. buy steel. Somebody's dead. <laughs> okay, safe to say you wouldn't want to go climbing with this guy or any serious rope sports, whatever that means. Could have been worse, I suppose, but don't go putting your life on the line for this one. All right, on to the much higher kilonewton rated carabiners, the ones people are likely often putting their life in the hands of in big ways. 22 to 24 kilonewton and above is often what I believe is considered to be the oh shit proof level and brings with it some brands I've heard of and some I've never heard of available on Amazon. This is the Camp Photon Wire. Amazon said 21 kilonewtons, the product says 22, the website says 22, so we're gonna go with 22. That's probably a good rule of thumb though if your carabiner doesn't have a bunch of KN ratings for different pull directions and some type of CEEN ISO UIAA certification stamp on it, run. It's 32 grams, but also we're in that what I'd call most useful size range now and gate opening size among carabiners. Let's kill it. It's insane how quickly these things let go when they do. Check out this reverberation on the arm after breaking. Some quick maths says that the first few microseconds the pieces are flying off these carabiners, approaching the speed of a gunshot. Crazy. This camp though, 20.12 kilonewtons, that's 92%. Now here, 22 kilonewtons is like 5,000 pounds from a 32 gram piece of aluminum and stainless wire. Maybe that's just where we're at now. Next up is the Trango, another D-shaped wire gate, which are probably my favorite all around, but we bought several types today just for fun. We paid $10.50 for it, but the pricing we're listing here can be all over the place. Just use it as a rough idea, really, and it is what we paid. The forged 7075 aluminum design on this one is pretty cool, also weighs 32 grams. We were not prepared for just how much this thing bends before snapping. This is a high quality $400 RAM that we've used to snap cylinder head bolts with before, but we max out its travel with most carabiners and have to take another go at it. But boy, is that money shot worth it. Okay, we're gonna move along now, basically because I really like making these things go boom and watching that. We'll record the data along the way, don't worry. The Cypher Series 2 wire rated at 24 kilonewtons, and it's cool because it's only 30 grams. The lightest full-ish size carabiner on the day, let's see that. Twenty nine point nine four thirty ish kilonewtons from the lightest model only rated for 24. That's good stuff. Next we have the black diamond D-shaped wire gate also 24 kilonewtons. It's a carabiner from a brand you might have heard of. I don't know. Let's blow it up.
While the explosion itself wasn't that impressive, man, 2,703 psi makes for 33.3 kilonewtons around 7,500 pounds force. That's incredible. 138% of the numbers on the side. Nice. Moving on. To some lock and gate models, often heavier but usually higher ratings as well, though not terribly so with this Palestine screw lock coming in at 25 kilonewtons. Its gate is heavier and also less tension on it, so you don't want to keep it open as these are easy to bump loose in this state. As that rating goes from 25 down to 7 kilonewtons when it's open, which is typical. But what about this guy? What is he doing? And doing very little research in the editing of this video after testing, I found after about two minutes of browsing, climbing, and carabiner pictures, this guy going absolutely YOLO on a non-locked locking gate carabiner. Again, I'm no expert, but this looks sketchy. Not even sure what he's doing, belaying someone down below him maybe. I don't know why I couldn't just clip this into the anchor directly, had to add some metal on metal action for no reason. And this is a stock photo, guys. They didn't even take this picture to highlight anything. I'm sure some of you guys can shine a light and easily explain this, but luckily enough for all of us, we tested this Palestine with and without the gate threaded closed because these can be annoying to do each time and we were curious. And this was surprising. The gate starts basically closed in line but unlocked. Then as it stretches, that becomes not so much the case and eventually breaks at 25.1 kilonewtons. It's rated for 25. That's impressive. So what's going on? Is this just a 60 kilonewton tank then? Well, we found that even threaded down and locked, the gate still starts to pull apart either way in a similar-ish fashion. This time breaking at 27.1 kilonewtons. Pretty close. In both cases, the latch end sort of pulls through the gate. It's just when locked that that causes the gate to fracture and split, whereas when not locked, it broke on the hinge end. Pretty interesting, and this was just a $7.50 carabiner. That's good stuff. So is this guy or maybe the person he's belaying dead? Well, it certainly looks like it's in the process of pulling out or never fully closed. Either way, probably not as it became a stock photo and not a news article, but also don't be stupid. Moving right along, this is the uh, Pandinja. We're gonna call this the Panda, sorry, never heard of this brand. It's an auto-locking twist lock, a spring-loaded sort of set and forget operation, which is a nice feature to have when you're this guy and forgot to twist or close by hand. And this is just $8 a piece, doesn't feel all that bad, and is 60 grams lighter than the manual twist lock. Nothing too dramatic on this one, just blew off the clasp end of the gate. This is a very high 28.3 kilonewtons though, looking pretty good. And second to last in our lineup, this is the Ryozu. Again, I don't know, Let's. it's the Rio. It's $12 a piece, so stepping that up again, 25 kilonewton rated, and this is probably one of the more smooth auto twist locking carabiners I felt. Feels very intuitive, like they worked on this for a while. Though it is 66 grams, or 10% heavier for it. Here it is. And this is about 7,000 frames per second. Check out this gunshot when slowed down to about 10,000 frames. Even got some muzzle smoke coming out of it. Now that's moving. 28.9 kilonewtons though, again, very good. Okay, last up, the largest and highest rated carabiner on the day, which is hard to pull off, being both of those things. The SE Peak, you'll pay for those stats with 92 grams. But is it not just heavy, but heavy duty? We think so, yes. This was a lackluster payoff, I'll tell you right now. The end of the gate clasp would just keep pulling out of the auto-locking gate and cause the already large carabiner to expand a lot and then a lot more until we maxed out our entire range, even with these shoddy spacers we added. But it did make it to 31.56 kilonewtons, but results will be with a grain of salt as we didn't break it like the others, more like slipping and growing 25% plus in length. So what did we conclude today? Who are the winners? Well, that would be us. I'm glad you guys recommended this. We love testing these. High speed footage is fun. Thank you. But overall, they're good. Way better than we thought, just looking at the numbers on these little pieces of aluminum on Amazon. The category winners, though, are as follows. Best performance to weight, the Cypher Series to wire. I prefer wire gates anyways, just more simple and get hung up on ropes a lot less. The forging design on this appears to be superior and pays off being lighter and still massively strong. Best low cost performer, that's Unijoy, punching well above its weight, 
I'd 100% hang a two-person hammock from these, no problem. Best cost overall among these that I would climb with, the Panda. This one technically comes in a little bit higher, but the auto locking gate on this is just much easier to live with and prevents you from doing stupid stuff. Man, $8 a piece, crazy good. And best overall, well, none of these are terrible. Even the camp, we had a sample size of one, so keep that in mind. And if these all tested like flashlights do, there'd be a lot of flat people out there. Seeing what we did measure though, I would pick the Black Diamond every day of the week and twice on Sunday. Strongest on the day, though we maxed out in stretch here. Most underrated among the professional bunch second in weight to performance, and one of the lowest costs to that performance. Now that's it from us, suggest more perhaps dubiously advertised products you want to see tested down below in the comments, and thanks for watching.